good afternoon um, this is the first lecture i am uh, delivering online with the final year and i am professor sogra parveen as you are seeing and topic is obstructive jaundice so um, the definition of the obstructive jaundice it the bile which has to be reached in the into the intestine is not reaching at the intestine because of any mechanical obstruction in the extra hepatic biliary tree or within the porta hepatis now if it's not reaching then there are certain effects of that bile which is present on different systems so what happens with the liver liver becomes swollen that is hydro capitosis that is dilated intrahepatic biliary radicals biliary cirrhosis may develop now biliary tree becomes cholangitis and fibrosis may occur now because of the absence of the bile there is a impairment of the digestion reduced fat absorption making feces bulky and fatty that is known as steatorrhea and there is a vitamin k malabsorption resulting into the coagulation problems so the patient's pt inr will be deranged now retention of the bile salts and the bile pigments in the blood and the body fluids resulting into jaundice that is yellowness of the body an altered coagulation prof profile hepatorenal syndrome renal failure and patient may go into the sepsis now because of these bile salts patient develop itching all over the body now what is the etiology of this obstructive jaundice so there are different types of biliary obstruction complete intermittent chronic intermittent inter incomplete or segmental obstruction now these intermittent obstruction symptoms and typical biochemical changes clinically jaundice may or may not be present and causes are the most common cause which you must know and it should be on the top priority is the cbd stones and then you have periampullary tumors duodenal diverticulum colidocal cyst these are the congenital cyst there are parasites which may reach in the biliary tree, uh, tree causes the obstruction that is biliary parasites and then hemobilia that is presence of the blood in the bile duct now chronic incomplete obstruction the causes are without with or without classical symptoms of biochemical changes and pathological changes in the bile ducts are the liver the causes are structure of the common bile duct now structure most of the time is related with the surgeries or it may be because of the inflammation or infection stenosis of the biliary enteric anastomosis that is again post surgery chronic pancreatitis may lead to the obstruction cystic fibrosis and sphincter of odi stenosis now what is segmental obstruction one or more segment of the intrahepatic biliary tract obstructed causes it could be traumatic intrahepatic stones sclerosing cholangitis or cholangiocarcinoma biliary obstruction if we think about the causes then the intrinsic causes are the extrinsic causes now intrinsic ductal calculi primarily developed de novo in the bile duct which is very rare and then secondary the most common reason of having calculi in the common bile duct that is cholecholithiasis and these are migrated from the gall bladder patient may have acute cholangitis biliary structures that is idiopathic or iatrogenic sclerosing cholangitis parasites hemobilia benign biliary tumors cholangiocarcinoma carcinoma of the ampulla of water and periampullary tumors intraductal secondary tumor seedings so these are the intrinsic reasons or intrinsic causes of the biliary obstruction now the extrinsic causes of the biliary obstruction merzies syndrome now what is merzies syndrome basically it is these st stone in the gall bladder hartman's pouch which is causing pressure over the common hepatic duct or part of the duodenum resulting into the obstruction and sometimes fistula formation so pancreatitis acute and chronic pancreatic pseudocyst carcinoma of the gall bladder carcinoma of the pancreas cystic tumors of the pancreas metastatic carcinoma 
or hepatocell hepatocellular carcinoma so it means these are the extrinsic reasons of producing obstruction or compression of the common bile duct now when you see the patients you have to look at the history and the clinical examination so patient will give the very typical history of severe jaundice pruritus that is itching all over the body but more on the back and the forearm these are the exposed parts patient may develop fever because of the cholangitis loss of weight because of the malignant reasons of the obstructive jaundice loss of appetite because of the bile in the blood pain in the right hypochondrium palpable gallbladder hydros uh, or palpable um, liver smooth non tender soft liver core wire sirs la now what is core wire sirs la it means there is a palpable gallbladder in the absence of any pain now if there is patient is having pain and there is a palpable gallbladder there are least likely chances that this is because of the stone but palpable gallbladder without pain most commonly because of the malignancy so this is the core wire sla charcot stride charcot stride is patient is of acute cholangitis have fever pain in the right hypochondrium and jaundice now estetoria estetoria as i said already it is because of the bulky stools due to mal absorption of the fat from due to bile salts so here corvisor's law is written very clearly that in the presence of palpably enlarged gallbladder which is non tender and accompanied with painless jaundice the cause is unlikely to be gallstones as i already ex explained now there are ex exceptions because corvisor's law is not 100% correct when there is a double impaction of the stone or impaction of pancreatic calculus at the ampule of water or mirzis syndrome now in these types the reason is the stone but patient is not having pain now you have to do certain investigations so these investigations are the routine investigation that is hemoglobin tlc count differential leukocyte count and for the fitness of the patient blood sugar renal function test and serum electrolytes so these are the baseline investigation then in the urine you will be having bilirubin or urobilinogen serum bilirubin total and direct both will be raised and the enzymes now you have to have a very clear cut demarcation between the reasons of the obstructive jaundice and the hepatitis now if patient is having obstructive jaundice the enzymes which are raised are alkaline phosphatase and gamma gt but if it is because of the hepatitis which is a medical jaundice or non obstructive jaundice then sgot and gpt both are will be the raised pt and um, as i already told because of the coagulation profile change so there is a prolonged pt and there is a less serum albumin because liver is damaged so serum albumin will be low in these patients and you have to look for the stool of occult blood to exclude the malignant causes so as i already told alkaline phosphatase and the gamma glutamyl transferase that is gamma gpt these are very important indicators of the obstruction now this is the chart you can see the difference between the obstructive jaundice and the medical jaundice so then you have to confirm with certain radiological investigations to confirm the presence of an extra hepatic obstruction to determine the level of the obstruction to identify the specific cause of the obstruction and to provide complementary inf information relating to the underlying diagnosis so you have to if, if cause is the malignancy you have to state the disease also so the most common and the easily available useful and accurate method for identifying the gallstones and the patho pathologic changes in the gallbladder is the ultrasonography it may show you acute cholecystitis chronic cholecystitis and cholelithiasis dilatation of the extra hepatic duct that is more than 10 mm or intra hepatic that duct that is more than 4 mm bile duct suggest biliary obstruction 
Intraoperative ultrasound is now used frequently to further evaluate the intraoperative lesions, assess the resectability, and determine the involvement of the vascular structure. So, perioperative ultrasound nowadays have very important role. Now, CT scan abdomen in case when you suspect that the cause is not the stone but the malignancy. So, you have to stage the disease as well as to assess the operability that is if the surgery is possible or not. MRCP that is magnetic resonance cholangiopancreaticography. This is a very good non-invasive test to visualize the whole hepatobiliary tree. There is no contrast use so patients can easily tolerate MRCP. Sensitive in detecting biliary and pancreatic duct stones structures. Now what ERCP, what is ERCP? The difference between MRCP and ERCP, MRCP is only the radiological visibility of the whole biliary tree but in ERCP along with that you can do something better for the patient. So visualize the site of the obstruction as well as you can take the brush biopsy, you can take the bile sample for the analysis and ERCP and MRCP similarly effective in detecting, detecting malignant hyalur and perihyalur obstruction. MRCP is better able to determine the extent and the type of tumor as compared to ERCP but the upper edge of ERCP is that you can take the biopsy and if there is an obstruction you can remove the stone, you can dilate the um, sphincter of odi, you can cut the structure and do the papillotomy to give relief to the patient. Endoscopic ultrasound. Now this is a recent modality. It is combined with the endoscopy. So endoluminal ultrasound has been reported to have up to 98% diagnostic accuracy in patients with obstructive jaundice. The sensitivity of endoscopic ultrasound for the identification of focal mass lesions in pancreas has been reported to be superior to that of CT imaging. The positive yield of um, endoluminal ultrasound for cytology in patients with malignant obstruction has been reported to be as high as 96 percent. So after knowing all the causes of the obstructive jaundice, symptoms of the obstructive jaundice and then the investigations of the obstructive jaundice, we have to treat the patient. So this is a very good chart of treat, uh, showing the treatment of malignant obstructive jaundice. After investigation, you have to see whether there is a metastasis or no metastasis. If there is no metastasis, it means patient is in the early stage and surgery is possible. And so you have to opt the operative procedures. So when you will go for the operation, you will see is this tumor resectable or non-resectable. If it is resectable, then you have to see whether you have to remove the whole tumor that is curative resection or you just remove it palliatively to divert or to uh, finish the obstruction that is the palliative resection. But if it is non-resectable tumor from the beginning then you have to op opt certain ways of putting the stents over there or you have to do certain surgeries that is known as bypass surgeries to bypass that obstruction. So that is the mutabadil rasta. You have to make the mutabadil rasta. But if from the start patient is having metastatic disease, so it means there is a poor surgical risk. Uh, with poor surgical risk, non-operative procedures you will adopt a non-operative same that is the placement of the stains endoscopically or percutaneously you have to place the stains to decrease the bile in the blood, blood that is to decrease the jaundice. Now ductal obstruction may be suspected cholangitis, suspected cholidocolithiasis without cholangitis or suspected lesion other than cholidocolithiasis. So it means either it is because of the stone or it is because of the malignancy. So suspected cholangitis, cholidocolithiasis without cholangitis. Cholidocolithiasis is the most common cause of biliary obstruction and you see you have to give a very much importance to this slide. Strongly suspected if the jaundice is episodic or painful 
Arif ultrasound has shown presence of gall stones or bile duct stones. Patients with suspected CBD stones should be referred for laparoscopic cholecystectomy with either preoperative ERCP or intraoperative cholangiography. Preoperative ERCP in this setting of jaundice is preferred. Diagnostic yield is high and therapeutic clearing the CBD of stones in 95% of the cases. It means in obstructive jaundice. If obstruction is because of the stone in the CBD, you have to do ERCP before surgery, remove that stone, release the obstruction and then go for the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Many authors have however favorably laparoscopic approach in which CBD stone is detected in the OR by means of intraoperative cholangiography and then laparoscopic biliary clearance is performed when cholelithiasis is confirmed. It means they in the operation theater you must have the cholelithiasis also. We have the laparoscope, we can do the cholecystectomy but for CBD stone you need to have a scope and a special um, training for doing the cholelithiasis to remove the stone from this common bile duct. The optimal approach in a particular setting should be dictated by the local expertise. As in our part of the world, in, in my hospital, in my ward, we don't have cholelithoscope, so we always go for the ERCP followed by laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Now, suspected cholangitis, a clinical picture compatible with acute suppurative cholangitis, that is charcoal stride, as I already told, that patient will be having fever with chills, leukocytosis, along with cholelithiasis, you will diagnose this patient as a cholangitis. Now, these patients need resuscitation, correction of any coagulopathies if present, administration of antibiotics, then ERCP for the diagnosis and treatment, and if ERCP is unavailable or not feasible because of previous RU and Y reconstruction, it means previous any surgery, then transhepatic drainage or surgery may be necessary. Main step of treatment of severe cholangitis is not just the administration of appropriate antibiotic, but rather the establishment of the adequate biliary drainage. So the reason of cholangitis is basically biliary stasis. There is a stasis and accumulation of the bile. So until and unless you will not drain the bile, you won't be able to cover up with the antibiotics only. So you have to drain that bile by doing certain by doing with the placement of the stain or papillotomy. Now suspected lesions other than cholelithiasis, when you don't find any gall stones on the ultrasound, when clinical presentation is less acute, that is constant abdominal or back pain, associated constitutional symptoms, that is weight loss, fatigue, anorexia, then you have to think about the malignancy first. So possible causes of may be classified into three categories, categories depending on the location of the obstructing lesion, the upper third of the biliary tree, the middle third and the lower third. So upper third obstruction may be polycystic liver disease, Carolis disease. You can well um, read the chart. Middle, mid, mid third obstruction, the commonest is the gallbladder cancer and the mid disease syndrome, cholangiocarcinoma. Lower third obstruction, cholangiocarcinoma, pancreatic tumors, ampullary tumors, and chronic pancreatitis. Now, uh, you have after diagnosis and the assessment of the resectability. Now, how you will assess the resectability of the tumor? You have to look at the superior mesenteric vein, the portal vein, the superior mesenteric artery, porta hepatis, whether tumor is involving these uh, important structures or any uh, lymph nodes present in that area, it shows the unresectability. The majority of the lesions will be clearly unresectable either because of the tumor extension are because of the presence of the hepatic or peritoneal metastasis. Now, we being a surgeon must know the operative management at the specific sites, whether it is operable, operable, then you have to resect, or when it is not operable, then you have to do certain bypasses. Now, upper third obstruction, 
palliation because the left hepatic duct has a long extra hepatic segment and is more accessible the preferred bypass is a left hepaticojejunostomy now resection for cure a formal hepatectomy or segmentectomy is required to ensure an adequate proximal margin of resection if the resection is carried out proximal to the hepatic duct by bifurcation several cholangiogenostomies have to be done to anastomose individual hepatic artery branches which is a bit difficult task you have to send patient to a specific centers who are doing this resection in case of left hepatic involvement resection of the cordate lobe is indicated as well now middle third obstruction palliation surgical bypass of middle third lesion is technically simpler hepaticojejunostomy is done distal to the hepatic bile duct bile uh, hepatic duct bifurcation exposure of the hilar plate or the intrahepatic duct is unnecessary in this case resection for cure tumor in this part usually quite amenable to resection along with the lymphatic chains in the exporta hepatis mercy syndrome this is the extrinsic obstruction of the common bile duct I, as I, i already told you either by causing inflammation of the gallbladder wall or via direct impingement so treatment of this syndrome is hepaticojejunostomy lower third obstruction palliation the preferred bypass technique for lower third lesion is the ru and y cholidocojejunostomy you as a final year student don't need to go into the detail of the ru and y cholidocojejunostomy but it is actually the palliation of the lower one third cholecystojejunostomy also carries uh, one can do but it carries a high risk of complications and subsequent development of jaundice now if you want to cure that patient and patient tumor is resectable the common and the most important operation is the whipple suppression that is known as pancreaticojejunectomy so resection of the lower third lesion usually involves a pancreaticojejunectomy so pancreaticojejunectomy is best performed in specialized centers this is not very important now post operative jaundice the development of jaundice in the post operative setting is approximately 1% of all surgical patients after operation when jaundice occur after a hepatobiliary procedure attributable to specific biliary causes retained common bile duct stones is the most common cause post operative biliary leakage you can have through injury to the common bile duct or development of biliary structures thank you